the last part of this section of the State of the Union, I'm going to talk a little bit about the efforts we've had here in 2020 on integrating Tor into other applications. If you take a look at what the Tor application ecosystem looks like today, we have the Tor browser. It's a component that we are maintaining in the Tor project. You heard from Matt a lot about this and from Antonella. We have the Onion browser, which was initiated by Mike Tikas and is now maintained by some folks at the Guardian project. We have Tails OS, Onion Share. We have Briar, Ricochet, Cooch, Ricochet Refresh, SecureDrop, Uni, and Brave. These applications all have different reasons for using Tor. Some of them are pure clients where they just need Tor to be able to access the Tor network and use the exit nodes and so on. Other of them are using the Onion services that you heard about from um, David, particularly for some of the nice properties that Onion service gives to applications, such as that you have the end-to-end -end uh, encryption and the anonymity properties from Tor, and you have the um, authentication from the host names being the public key of the service. During today's State of the Onion, you will hear more about Ricochet Refresh and SecureDrop and Uniprobe a bit later. If we zoom in on the core component of a Tor stack, that is the Tor component itself, if we look at how Tor has evolved over time, Tor is a single binary today, which has a lot of different purposes built into it. First of all, it's a Tor client. That's what most people are using it for. You'll be using it to access the internet, either via the exit nodes, or you will use the Onion services to stay inside the Tor network and browse securely through that. It's also a binary that provides the ability for you to host Onion services. So you can set it up together with a web server and so on and host things as an Onion service. Additionally, the binary is also a relay and it's both a relay for a guard, middle and exit, all three parts of the, of the, uh, hub, of the circuit that you're making. So this part has, of course, a component of Onion routing. It has the directory service. The directory service is used for clients to get an idea about the state of the network, to know about which nodes that are in the network. But additionally, the binary also supports things like being a directory or bridge authority. And today we only have nine of these nodes in the network in total. So there's very few people who have a need to uh, run this code in, inside of Tor. So one of the things that we have been uh, working on here is to make some of these things optional. So today it's possible to build Tor um, without support for relays. And additionally, if you want to run it as a relay, you can also build Tor without support for directory or bridge, uh, uh, bridge authorities. This will hopefully remove some surface from people. Additionally, we've worked on making Tor easier to build as a library so you can integrate it into your applications on both Android and, and on iOS or on desktop applications that some people are using. So historically, most people have been integrating the applications with just the binary, but it's now possible to also interface with it via an, a very tiny API that we hope to work on in the future as well. As Matt talked about in the Tor project, we've had a very, very big focus on mobile first. It has primarily been targeting the Android platform from Google, but here in 2020, we've worked with our friends at the Guardian project that you're going to hear more about later in the State of the Onion on enhancing Tor for the Apple's iOS platform. It comes from a very specific need that next slide will be about, but some of the things we've been doing here is working with them on integration issues, how they work with this new way of uh, embedding Tor as a library, We've worked with them on a network extension, which um, is all about uh, extracting TCP flows and handling DNS traffic and sending it through Tor, and especially also memory profiling. Some of the reasons that we're working on this here in 2020 is that Apple have deprecated the WebKit 1 API that exists on the iOS platform and are now only providing the WebKit 2 interface. Unfortunately, WebKit 2 does not provide access to the APIs that we need for transferring data through a proxy. So our best option here is this network extension system that we're working on right now. Unfortunately, the network extension has some limitations on the platform. For example, um, initially you could only use six megabytes of memory for it. Today you can use 15 megabytes. This is a very small amount of resources for doing what we want to do. And we need to have a little bit of a margin to be sure that we're safe in what we're doing. In the rest of 2020 and in 2021, we are going to continue focusing on in, helping people integrate Tor into their applications. We hope to see more people having good ideas where Tor makes a lot of sense to put into their software. We're going to continue working on the mobile part. We are mobile first after all. 
And we hope to also be investigating more VPN-like experiences in 2021. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to ask on YouTube. And I will pass the mic back to our director, Isabella.